I'll be volunteering to help elect Nahid Menchi as leader of Alberta NDP and ultimately Premier of Alberta. Menchi was mayor of Calgary. I thought he did a fine job. He might have had my vote just based on that, but not my overt volunteer effort. Based on two interviews I've heard, I'm now very keen to put some personal time in on this. Let me share with you what I heard. Do you see benefits in nuclear power? And frankly, where do you see the energy sector in this province going? Now, nuclear is an interesting one. I believe that nuclear is likely a, a part of the solution in terms of crafting our electricity grid going forward. However, what we've seen from the UCP is they're never going to do anything. They've talked about nuclear for a million years. They sort of pretend that that's part of their solution, but they're not really serious about it, in my opinion. And so if we're going to have an all of the above solution, we got to be open to all the solutions. We actually have to move on them as well. Now, UCP's Daniel Smith gets credit for repeatedly citing nuclear power as a carbon-free source of energy. Alberta is collaborating with three other provinces on nuclear strategies. Things have happened, but there's also much more to do because Alberta has never had nuclear power plants before. Then she will be the first Alberta NDP leader who supports nuclear power. We all should. It's a single lowest carbon, least polluting source of energy on planet Earth. But until recently, if we wanted nuclear power in Alberta, we had to vote conservative. If nuclear power was the only thing I cared about, I might still support Daniel Smith. I would consider it despite my appreciation for Ninchi's time as mayor of Calgary. However, I also agree with the rest of Ninchi's response. Demand is going to increase. Demand for electricity is going to increase. I think that the UCP government has been really foolish in cutting back on renewables when that's where the investment is. They've turned away anywhere between 30 and $300 billion of investment in Alberta and all the attendant jobs. It's absolutely true that the clean electricity regulations that the federal government is putting out in draft form will not meet the needs of Alberta. They'll be impossible for Alberta to meet. But I see that as an opportunity for a negotiation to make a better deal instead of basically overreacting and saying, well, we don't want any renewable. This one incident is a typical example of my frustration with Danielle Smith. It seems we all agree that we can't depend on solar and wind to meet Alberta's electricity demand. But scaring investors away from Alberta energy projects is needlessly divisive. Daniel Smith's pause on renewables included geothermal. Alberta's environment minister was in Germany at the time promoting geothermal technology that had been developed in Alberta. Then, Danielle Smith claimed the pause had been at the request of Alberta's electric utility. Why would anyone want to invest in a province that cancels large projects on a moment's notice without at least advising that industry that's affected? One of the things I'm disappointed by that I haven't seen the media cover is that we were asked to do this by our regulators. We uh, made the letters available to every member of the media on this. The letter she cites never requested a pause. I feel that Daniel Smith does this with everything, makes everything as divisive as possible. My experience in Calgary with first Nahid Nenshi as a mayoral candidate, then as a three-term mayor, was that no pots were being unnecessarily stirred to rile up a base. In the end, you know, three elections later, leaving office with super high approval ratings, people still saw me as that conduit for the better community that they wanted. And she is willing to listen to all sides of every issue, and Nahid Nenshi brings people together. I'm happy to take any questions you have on nuclear power or small modular reactors. Just leave a comment. If you believe, as I do, that nuclear power is an essential part of Alberta's clean energy mix, head to ninji.ca. Here's a really brief summary of why nuclear power is important to me. Number one, cost. Everyone has been focused on LCOE, the levelized cost of electricity. It wasn't until 2023 that Lazard, the folks who publish LCOE reports, started to include firming costs. The costs of firming intermittent energy sources can overwhelm their otherwise low cost. In Ontario, where they use all sources of energy to produce electricity, the cheapest is hydropower and the second cheapest is nuclear. Number two, reliability. Nuclear power has one of the highest capacity factors of any energy source. Night or day, summer or winter, sunny or cloudy, windy or still. Number three, safety. 
nuclear power is one of the safest sources of energy, even safer than wind power and hydropower. Those are two very safe sources of energy. Number four, energy density. The energy potential of a nuclear bond is two million times that of a chemical bond. That means less mining. That means less waste. It also means humanity will never run out of nuclear fuel. Number five, low carbon. Nuclear power is the single lowest carbon source of energy on planet Earth, the lowest. If any of these pro-nuclear arguments are in conflict with what you've heard before, let me know. I'm happy to work through these with you. Before you head to nensheet.ca and register your support. For Albertans still on the fence about Nenshi himself, he was only the mayor of Calgary, so he's more familiar to us than anywhere else in Alberta. Here's another interview he gave. I hope you can give a quick listen to. One thing happened was when it got really, really cold in January, and I know what a grid alert means. And so I thought, oh, geez, it's a, it was a Friday. It was four o'clock. The typical electricity peak is on weekdays between four and seven. You have to manage the peaks. I thought, all right, well, I better go online and tell people we're in a grid alert. So please, you know, even if your dishwasher is running, stop at mid-cycle. Don't use your washer dryer right now. If you can delay cooking dinner, delay cooking dinner. Pretty straightforward stuff. And it's not very controversial. So I went to see what the government was actually saying so that I could retweet and amplify. And I realized that they weren't saying anything except they were using it as an opportunity to punch Stephen Gilbo in the face. I get it. There's, it's tempting to punch Stephen Gilbo in the face. But when you're in an actual emergency, there are other priorities. Because had we gone into rolling blackouts when it was minus 45, minus 50 in northern Alberta, people could be very hurt. I realized that, geez, this government doesn't actually know how to be a government. They only know how to be politicians and frankly, not very good ones. That really hit me hard because what most people don't realize is when you're the mayor, the stuff that people read in the newspaper, the legislative stuff, the council stuff and so on is maybe 20% of your job. You know, half of your job is actually running a complex organization and getting smart on the files and supporting the wonderful city colleagues who are doing the work. And then there's a part of your job that is a little amorphous, but it is about being the leader, you know, showing up during emergencies, not as a politician, but as the person who can give people the advice they need, the information they require at this time to keep themselves safe. I follow both Premier Daniel Smith and Nahid Nenshi on Twitter. As I listened to the interview, Nenshi's recount rang true. Going back, looking at their Twitter timelines, it is true. Nenshi was doing the Premier's job. Please consider supporting Nahid Nenshi's campaign at denenshi.ca.